was just curious, does the craving, um, the movement from craving to clinging happens way faster than any other link in the whole, um, yeah, or at least in the seven? It's pretty fast. <laughs> so the only, the only way to, you know, the, that's why we try to teach you to detect. You don't have to know what the craving's about if you can learn to detect the tension change. And the way you have to do this is by tuning up your awareness, what you're watching for as your eyes are closed and see if you can feel what's happening with this craving when it comes up. Yeah, see if you can sense the change. The, the deeper you're working, uh, then the better your chances to catch it at an earlier state. The reason a person would say, who is a one point of concentration, oh, there's nothing there, is because there's no way they could possibly feel it. It would take them at least a week to let go of severe one pointedness, three to four days to let go, to even realize that there is anything happening there. But if we get you to the state where you're beginning to watch, then you're beginning to sense it, you see, okay? Do you remember the awful picture of Freddie, right? You remember Freddie. <laughs> I mean, Freddie, Freddie is the example of all this. So let me let me go do Freddie one time here. We'll turn this stuff off. I have um, Freddie, and what you know, I'm still no good as an artist, but you know, here is this guy. Okay, and um, you know, he he's a meditator, okay, and um, and you know, his he stands here and hands here and, and um i'm not going to give you the whole body i guess maybe i'll do it that way because i messed up <laughs> but um you know he, here's where he is and then there's another person his friend who came to do to try twim you know he came to try twim and um he's over here I'm waiting for the art department i'm waiting for the art department to tell me i can go back to school right <laughs> <laughs> nothing's going to happen okay and, and you know this person now when they come the point is what's happening to them up up here and they're both meditating you know they're both meditating but the, the problem is that one of them has been practicing a way where um one of them has been practicing a way where whenever anything comes up, we throw it away and come right back. And it irritates us, but we, we just, what we're supposed to do is throw it away and then come right back. So this one, they start at a level here. Wait a minute, if you do this right. Where here is the tension they come into with from the street. They both have the same level of tension. Sorry, your head's a little short. There you go. Okay. Um, and now when you have something come up here, he's going, to, he's going to throw it away and come right back and continue with his meditation. Chances of this lowering down at all is not very much. As he gets deeper into a retreat, he goes a little bit with a little less tension, less tension, slowly it might get, say, to here, say it gets to here. But then when something comes up, if he goes to it for, if he, if he um, engages it, if he engages it, then he throws it away and he comes right back. And that's all he does. Now, what we have to look very closely at is what was right effort. And that over here, you know, Freddie's here and Freddie's been doing twim for a long time. So he knows that if this comes up over here and his mind is not staying in front of him with his spiritual friend or whatever he's doing, wherever he's sending it to all people, he's sending, if he's sending it to all beings in the directions, wherever he is in his practice, he knows that when, if he notices this, that what he should do is simply let go, let go, just let it go. Don't push it, don't throw it, don't make any effort for anything at all. 
just let go, let it go. And then he does this, he, he relaxes, he let it go, he relaxed and he smiled. Okay, so what happened was it started to go down. Each time when you get to the relax point here and the smile here, right in between is something special. And this is a little point of dropping down. That's where it lives. When we look at the printout, we see that's where there's a, a tiny little cessation point inside this spot, this spot right here, right there, okay? And if you actually are calm enough to notice that there's no craving and nothing in that spot, you have discovered the reality of a state of cessation that actually exists. And many of us went running to Bhante saying, oh my gosh, this stuff is real. And he said, what do you mean? I said, I just saw this clear as day. There's nothing here, nothing in that spot. And it's absolutely free of me watching, reaching, trying to do anything. It is cessation and it's real which gets you excited that, that you really are moving towards a place that does exist because many of us trusted this and believed in it and worked at it, but didn't, to be honest, believe there really was such a thing as the cessation of craving. But now we know it's real. So what does it do to him? It gets him, he wants to keep going. And the next time it happens, he gets to relax again and when he does that relax he he's just letting it go he's continually going down like this and progressing in his practice to retrain his brain to relax and each one of these is letting him go deeper now of course there's an up and down thing here i mean you don't get to get it like this slow down here and go home after the retreat and it stays there it's not what i'm saying you see, but more and more gradually, you can go into that state and get lower and lower. So when the idea was when the whole body was here, when I used to do the whole body, uh -huh. okay, <laughs> when I did the whole body, you got to what? You got to zero tension and tightness, yeah, and, and, and tightness. And when you got to zero tension and tightness, what is that? That is the you're not there anymore. There's nothing personal there anymore. You're just witnessing. And then when you reach that point, you are at the point where we talk about the waterfall going like this, you know, down uh, with all the levels and you're going down like this, one, two, three, four, infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness, and neither perception or non-perception, what you're doing here is falling off you're falling down into cessation. That's where you're going to. And this one is zero. It was a C. It really is a C. <laughs> no tension and tightness. Nothing. Nothing is there. See? Nothing is there. So, you know, then, then somebody said to me, you know, um, okay, if you want to take a picture of that, fine, but I'll leave it there. So the point is, what's the point of that? Well, you know, when I was doing research in Sri Lanka, the team was broken up between medical people, mechanical people, and um, social, social, uh, social science people in, the, in this little team that was working originally on that first try of doing research on TWIM. And the medical people were really excited because their whole thing was, what happens to the human body when there's no stress on it anymore? and things heal inside. And all of the Ayurvedic things that say, let your body heal become true. If you have the whole picture and you're relaxing and not covering up the symptoms and you're trying to get the rest you need, the sleep you need, the food you need, the exercise you need properly, bet me that your body probably will heal much faster than before. And this is good for your immune system too, to defend yourself, to do all this. 
Yes, and we all let it slide. We let it slide at different times in our lives. We get busy and we, we find ourselves up too late. I, that happens to me too, <laughs> you know? And then I can't exercise enough because I don't wanna put up with the pain in the legs, which probably the pain would be going away more if I would just do the walking, even though there's swelling, it would eventually stop probably a lot of it if I would just exercise more, but it's not level. And I, by the time I go up the hill and down, I'm already swelling, you know, I'm faced with that. So, <laughs> so there are things that are going to fix all this that are coming. But the point here is that this point of cessation is a total rest of your body it's it's like a miracle that it can be you can learn to actually sit in that it'll protect you and your health for a long long time and you can actually use this to go in and out even in the different states the mental states once you've gotten to the place where you are calm enough to recognize infinite space you sit there for a while you sit there for a while in the middle of the day and then stop and you can let go of everything, you see? And things are much better for you all around. Digestion, sleep, everything helps you. So, so this, is the, this is how this is working, but the person who you could, you could understand, couldn't you understand by, by looking at that, you could understand when we go back to it for a second, okay? You can understand why this one over here, he can't notice it because he's doing something strenuous here and he's exerting energy to throw the hindrance away, push it away. And the terminology which has arisen around the hindrance is an extremely unfortunate thing. The, the terminology has gone like this, destroy it, annihilate it, eradicate it, suffocate it, suppress it, subdue it, make it stop. Who makes it stop? You will have to make it stop. What did we say the meditation actually was? You doing nothing, you leaving the building, leaving and turning around and watching through the doorway witnessing what happens if you are not trying to make anything happen that is a secret was the secret to how he finally stopped doing anything forcible read about it if you're studying the uh, suttas you know go to 36 examine the sutta very carefully okay and the whole front part of the sutta is him telling monks what they should not spend time doing because I did this and it failed. That's the whole front section of the sutta. Then at section 30 in the sutta, we hear something remarkable and we have to acknowledge something happened that changed the way he was practicing and it's not paid attention to because they don't usually go to the suttas to, to do this anymore. They use other forms of things to to teach with and so you don't get people sitting there reading what happened so listen to this when you get to 30 i'll read it to you um no i said that 30 blah, 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 blah. first of all he says at 30 i thought whatever recluses or brahmins in the past have experienced painful racking piercing feelings due to exertion this is the utmost and there is none beyond this and whatever recluses and brahmins in the future will experience painful racking piercing feelings <clears throat> due to exertion this is the utmost there is none beyond this and whatever recluses and brahmins in the present time experience painful racking piercing feelings due to exertion due to exertion <laughs> Let's say it again, due to your exertion, okay, trying too hard, this is the utmost, there is none beyond this. But by this racking practice of austerities, here comes the punchline, I have not attained any superhuman states, any distinction in knowledge and vision that is worthy of the noble ones. That's what he's telling them. And then he thinks to himself, could there be another path to enlightenment? And he considers, 
I considered, I recall that my when my father, the Sakin, was occupied in the Harvest Festival, okay, while I was sitting in the cool shade of the rose apple tree, quite secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from unwholesome states, I entered upon and abided in the first jhana. He fell into the jhana. He was a young child whose nanny had put him there to rest while she attended the, cer the ceremony of, you know, 10, 12 feet away, which is accompanied, and then he says, this is accompanied, the standard text accompanied by applied and sustained thought with rapture and pleasure born of seclusion. Could that be the way to enlightenment, he wonders. And then following on that memory came a realization. I thought, am I afraid of that pleasure that has nothing to do with sensual pleasures and unwholesome states? I thought, I am not afraid of that pleasure since it has nothing to do with sensual pleasures and unwholesome states. And what he's talking about is the pleasure that he feels, he, he can feel by going through the jhanas, through the joy and the compassion and the equanimity that he can feel as he's going through that, you know? It is not easy to attain that pleasure with a, a body that is excessively emaciated. And this is the point where he decides, suppose I eat a little solid food boiled with rice. And this is where he pulls himself together. He figures, I do have to eat. I do have to rest. I do have to not stop breathing. I do have to take care of my body. But does, do you see what was happening? Do you see how this was working? He had to change to a less, uh, less tension and tightness so that he could allow himself, not atta attain, reach for, make happen, personally acquire, get there, all that stuff. It is an attainment that you've done, but to try to make it personally, make it happen, sets you up to fail.